A cohort of patients carrying E. coli that harbors MCR1, some of whom were asymptomatic carriers of the bacterium, have been identified in a New York hospital. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. This is the MCR1 may be spreading under the radar edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and this study it comes from ASM's Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy, or AAC, journal. Take a message from this study is that patients carrying E. coli with MCR1 were found in a New York hospital. Now, MCR1 is a big deal because it confers resistance to the antibiotic colistin, one of the last lines of defense um, in fighting some of these gram-negative bacteria. Colistin resistance via MCR1 has been an issue in many other countries, and also in the United States, but the cases are slightly rarer in the United States, with only 53 cases to date, the first of which was actually reported in the same journal in, I believe, 2017, although it may have been 2016. Now, and now comes the news that a cluster of patients who have received liver transplants are carrying MCR1 E. coli, and they were detected in the Columbia University Irving Medical Center here in New York City. One of the patients was identified because they were symptomatic, but the others were found by screening their uh, stool retrospectively, and the E. coli was found in their stool, and they were, uh, they were found to be asymptomatic carriers. On our next slide, we'll see that the patient who was um, initially described as harboring this uh, MCR1 carrying E. coli was febrile the day after surgery, and that blood cultures from this patient were able to grow MCR1 positive E. coli. Uh, after that, the patient was able to be successfully treated with an antibiotic uh, meropenem because uh, this particular antibiotic resistance does not necessarily mean that the isolate carries resistance to all antibiotics, merely that this particular gene or um, genetic determinant is found within this isolate. After this, other patients who were in the same ward uh, were screened as they were being screened as part of a, their normal treatment, and they were contributing fecal samples. These fecal samples were um, continually tested for E. coli containing various uh, resistance uh, determinants, and the onset of this uh, multi-drug resistant E. coli containing MCR1 was found um, at 241, 275, and 322 days post-transplant in patients 2 through 4. The uh, MCR1 gene itself was found only through whole genome sequencing uh, of these isolates, and the gene itself was found to be carried X4 plasmid, which is uh, very similar to um, all of the different uh, plasmids which were found in this partic particular cohort. Um, so the, the relationship between the isolates themselves are shown in this um, uh, phylogenetic tree here on the right-hand side. And you can see that some of the patients had received endoscopies at the same time or around the same time. Um, this is the closest clue to how the isolate was able to spread between patients um, as all of the patients live in different zip codes uh, and um, the, the hospital is not quite sure how this bug was able to pass between um, patients to asymptomatically um, colonize them. Now, the good news is that even two and a half years after um, the follow-up of this liver transplant, there's been no MCR1-related disease due to this E. coli within the patients, but um, they do continue to harbor this particular isolate. Uh, on our next slide, we'll see that um, the importance of this study is that it demonstrates the potential for a silent dissemination of this antibiotic uh, resistance determinant in the U.S. hospital setting uh, through asymptomatic colonization. So it's possible to be spread um, to other vulnerable patients who may eventually come down with disease that can't be treated with colistin uh, due to carriage of this MCR1 gene. There is a possible role for endoscopy for the spread, but in this study, um, they specifically state that different endoscopes were used, different instruments, um, which are shown on the right-hand side. And those endoscopes can be a little bit um, dangerous because they've been shown in previous studies to transfer resistant isolates between patients. And so when patients are being treated at the same time, um, or even subsequently, um, they are the hospitals and healthcare settings are very careful to use um, different sterilized 
endoscopes for each patient. Uh, and so it seems unlikely that it was direct transference through the endoscopy procedure. However, because some of the patients did have that procedure around the same time, that is still a possible link for how this was passed um, to become an asymptomatic uh, infection within the patients. This study really highlights the need for ongoing surveillance because these isolates were only found after the patient one had become febrile and some of those fecal samples were, were screened. Um, and uh, it also um, points out that clinical uh, manifestations only represent the tip of the iceberg, uh, which could be a much larger spread of this particular antibiotic resistance bug um, due to asymptomatic colonization. I'd like to thank you for listening to Microbial Minutes and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.